HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, business leaders, uh, you name it. And that is really because of the guests who join me. Uh, These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they share that expertise with all of you uh, during this podcast so that you can uh, get the information you need, apply it to your business, and uh, be more successful. Today is no different. Today, my guest is Maria Pesson. Maria is a senior apparel industry executive with an outstanding history of achievement and over 25 years of field experience. She's developed brands from the ground up and taken well-known names as plans for New York apparel giants like Fleet Street and G3 Apparel Group, building multi-million dollar brands. Establishing new businesses, growing existing businesses, and bringing new fashion trends into the marketplace is what she enjoys most about her job. Thanks so much for joining me today, Maria. Thank you, and thank you for such a lovely introduction. Well, you are welcome. (laughs) Uh, We are going to be talking today about uh, bootstrapping a business, which um, is always such a a key topic. Uh, And so... I think I want to start with asking 
uh, what could potentially be a general question, which is how much money does someone really need to start a business? Well, that is a very general question. And <laughs> there really isn't any one answer to that because it depends on what you want to achieve and how quickly you want to achieve it and the kind of business that you're going into. So it varies by business to business. Um, you could put a million dollars into a business and have traction much quicker, or you could put 5,000 into your business and you'll have traction in a much lower manner. But depending on what you have available, there are different levels that you can go into when you start your business. So if you're bootstrapping and starting with a small amount of money, you'll plan and do your business in a different way than someone who came in with you know, $2 million and is ready to hire people, get PR in a big way, have the best you know, photography and stuff. I worked um, with Jessica Simpson Coates uh, for about six years, and they were owned by a company called the Commuto Group. Vince Commuto, who is the owner, was also one of the founders of Nine West Shoe Wear. So he had a lot of background in building brands. He knew what he was doing. And when he came out with his own Commuto brand, Vince Commuto brand, he went out whole hog. He put 50 pages, 50 advertising pages and magazines his first year in business. And I'm talking about Vogue, Bazaar, Glamour, high-end magazines that cost a lot of money. And yes, he got immediately into all the stores because everybody was reading about him and wanted to buy the product. But that's not always feasible and usually not feasible for most people. So when you're starting your business, you have to figure out how much money you can put towards it and then you make your plans around that. That's really great. And so it's really about being realistic about what you're going to be able to accomplish in what time frame. Exactly. And one of the things about bootstrapping is that you're basically taking any money you make, plowing it back into the business till you get to a, a scalable point where you can start taking profit. And that's yeah, the key yeah. thing to remember with bootstrapping. And it takes a few years for it to get going. It, most businesses do. Most businesses take a couple of years before they start seeing real sales. And the first year is, is tough because no one wants to buy a new line. They don't know you. There's no history behind you. Nobody knows the brand. So you have to get a few brave souls to test your product and they do well with it, then you can start talking to other people and you have proof of concept and people know that you're successful, they'll be more apt to buy you. And then the stores that did buy you, they start to reorder, they buy new seasons. So you can see how you start to get traction and it kind of snowballs. You know, I always um, liken starting a new business to riding a bicycle uphill. The first few revolutions are impossible. You could barely <laughs> turn the pedals, right? I mean, you, you think you're never going to get started, but yeah. you finally get that first revolution in and then the second and the third, and you start to build up a momentum and you start to kind of coast up the hill till you get to the top of the hill. And then, you know, things are much easier and much right. more smooth sailing. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's a great um, analogy. And when you were talking about um, getting the, that at first people have to get used to you and get the idea that you're around for a while and that you have a reputable brand and, and whatnot, um, the, the question came into my mind about, so when someone's starting a business, if they're starting it with bootstrapping, it, are there particular things that they should focus their money on? Like, yes. should, should they, fo right? Should like they focus yes. on marketing there, or what do you think? Well, there's a million things to focus on. But okay. the very first thing I always tell people is come up with a business plan. A business plan will kind of flesh out your idea and forces you to ask, answer questions that create your messaging, 
help you decide how much money you need, what you can do. Let's say you come up with this business plan and you realize that with what you're doing, marketing is very key. So you'll put more money into marketing. Or maybe you'll say to yourself, I could do the marketing myself. I have the time to do that. So I'll put more money into um, doing trade shows. So it, it kind of depends. Everything comes from the business plan. So you can yeah. decide what you can do based on the business plan that you make. And there's a million ways to spend your money. I think that um, two things that I would concentrate on is making the best product you can making sure your shipping is right and all of that and doing the due diligence to make sure that what you're making is something needed in the market, that you're bringing something special and unique and you have a reason to be. So to me, product is very, very important, but then also getting your name out to create sales is very important. So those are two key things I would think about when I was developing my business from the beginning. Okay. I, I really appreciate that. And, and so talk some about how someone would go about doing that market research, making sure that what they want to put out there is something that people actually want to buy. Well, I usually do a competitive analysis. I decide someone comes to me with a product. Um, I work with clients who are starting businesses or building existing businesses. So they come to me and they, we talk about what their product is about and we figure out who their competition is based on the product they're doing. So for example, if they're doing sneakers, sports sneakers, we might look at Adidas, Nike, New Balance, people like that and see what they're doing so that we can see what we're going to be doing differently. We also look at the quality for the price so that we make sure the price value is there. So we look at it from a style point of view, as well as a um, price point of view and a marketing, like what do they do for their marketing to get their name out? Because sometimes you're not developing a new product that's so different, but it's your way of selling it, the way of marketing it that makes it unique. For example, Tom's shoes. Tom's is a great example. When they first came yeah. out and they still do this now, they decided that for every shoe they sold, they would donate a shoe, a pair of shoes to someone who didn't have shoes, children who didn't have shoes, people who didn't have shoes. Now their shoes weren't that unique, you know, they were, you know, like other shoes, but their whole marketing platform was very unique. I remember my daughter was a teenager at the time when they came out and she wanted to buy Tom's and no offense, Tom's, but personally, I don't like the shoes. They're not that important to me. <laughs> I like things with heels and a little bit more feminine. These were in, these were more unisex looking. Yeah. So yeah. So, but she wanted those sneakers, those shoes. And I said, "But why would you want those shoes?" She said, "Well, mom, they give a pair of shoes for every one they sell." So it became like a cool, hip shoe to buy, even though it really wasn't a cool, hip style. And yeah. it was all around their marketing. So there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but I always look at the competition to make sure that my ideas are something worthwhile. I once um, was working with someone and we put together a business plan. That was the goal of the consulting was to make the business plan. And by the end of doing it, he realized that his product, there was no need for it. There was a million companies doing what he wanted to do and his wasn't so special and different. And he decided to pass and do a different business opportunity that he had. And honestly, I thought he got great results because what if he did do the business and found out yeah. after spending, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, that there was no need for that business. So sometimes, right. you know, doing the business plan, it's disappointing, but it's yeah. important to know that. Right, exactly. That's right. why I like business plans. Yeah, I see. I see, and I, I like this competitive analysis as well because you have to know if how you differentiate from everyone else who's in the same uh, market. Mm -hmm. That's not the word I was looking for, but I, I can't think of the word. But it's okay. a good word. It, it's appropriate. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, then we'll go with it. <laughs> um, 
And and will you talk some about what a unique selling proposition is, please? Yes, it's what makes you unique in the market. What is it that you bring to the table that sets you apart? What's your reason to be? So let's come up with an idea um, of what that might be. Spanx. Spanx is one of my favorite stories because she came up with a concept. She's worth a billion dollars now. She came up with this concept because she was looking for something to wear under her pants because the pants were somewhat see-through, but she wanted to wear sandals and they all had feet and she couldn't find it anywhere. So she took pantyhose and she cut off the feet and that's what um, she wore. But she saw something out there that didn't exist and she thought what a great idea to create shapewear that kind of holds you in without being like the uh, girdles of yesteryear that my grandmother used to wear. You know, the ones that are like body armor yeah. Like you don't even need to put a body in it and it stands up by itself, you know, that kind. <laughs> and she went out there, she went to several manufacturers, nobody wanted to make it, they thought it was a crazy idea, but she got one person to make it and the story was born. So her, yeah. that was her unique selling proposition. Now, again, you don't have to recreate the wheel each time, but you have to have a reason. There's just too much competition out there and you have to be ahead of the game in some way. Okay. And I think that's really, really important for people to realize that the the world doesn't necessarily need one more of the same thing. Right. Even though it seems like there are a lot of things that are similar, there's got to be some sort of a differentiator in order to make it attractive for people to, to consider it, take a look right. at it and, and potentially want to buy it. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Uh, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I have some more questions for you. Sounds good. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Your Oxygen Mask First by Kevin Lawrence and The Ultimate Sale by Justin Goodbread. So visit audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Maria Pesson about bootstrapping a business. Okay, so let, let's talk some about sales. I uh, believe, and, and I think you agree, that companies need strategies to make sure that they are actually gaining sales instead of like sitting back and waiting for people Hoping to show up. Hoping for the up. best, right? Exactly, right. So what strategies do you suggest that, that someone use to create sales? Well, the first thing I want to say is that a lot of owners of businesses and founders, they aren't necessarily salespeople. You know, they're yeah. creative people in, a lot of times or they just haven't sold their production people. They have certain skill sets, but it doesn't include sales and they're afraid of it. They yep. shy away from it. They, you know, there's all those um, beliefs about salespeople. They all lie. They all cheat. You know, you can't trust them. They just want to make a sale. They don't care about you. So they buy into all of that nonsense. And the truth of the matter is sales is a service. And good salespeople are people who are honest and do the right thing by their customers. Bad salespeople don't last. People who are dishonest, they don't last because they don't create any kind of bond with any of the buyers that they want to come back to them because they can't trust them. So you really have to be an ethical person and you have to focus on it. Even if you just hire other people to do it, you still have to spend time every day on selling your business and marketing your business. So it's very key and very important. Um, I have a mastermind group that I'm a part of. And one of the things that we do is we hold each other accountable. And every day we do five things to build our business. 
that are sales marketing efforts to build our business. And we always commit to doing that. And whether that's uh, five or, you know, 10 or six, I don't know, whatever that number is for you, but you have to spend the time. Um, when I was doing sales full time and I started out as a salesperson and that definitely my strength and my skill set. I would spend eight, nine hours a day just cold calling people. That was before the internet. I'm a little old. And, um, you know, they, <laughs> and they would just, um, I would just call and call and call and call. And what I think of when I sell, it's like my business. You know, I work with, I said, startups and small businesses. And when somebody hires me, I feel happy for them. I feel like they're lucky that they found me. And I know it's going to sound egotistical, but I know the kind of work I do for a client. I know how much I give to them and how much I help them and what a difference it makes in their business. And I think good thing they found me so that I can help them save money and scale their business quickly. So if you have a product or um, a business, you should be proud of what you're selling and feel like you're doing a service to whoever buys it that your stores are going to make money with you and they're going to be more successful in their business. So if you look at it as you're doing a service, as opposed to just getting people to just buy stuff, it's a whole different attitude about it. And yeah. you and selling is key. So there's so many ways to sell. One way is like I said, cold calling and contacting people. I personally believe that you should do three things. You should call them, you should email them and you should mail, snail mail them things so that you hit them on three different um, levels so that they're getting a lot of points of contact with you. They say that there needs to be, there's studies on this, everybody's a little different, but they say nine points of contact before someone really registers you. So that's yeah. one way to sell. The other thing is you can do trade shows. You still have to pre-sell those and post-sell those, but you get um, a lot of concentrated traffic at trade shows. Another way is sales reps, um, independent sales reps who represent several lines and go to all the stores in their territory and sell. They have relationships with their stores, so they bring your product there and they take orders for you. So there's a lot of ways um, to approach it and to do selling, but the key thing is to do it. You know, <laughs> and and people, you know, they say, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, yeah. you can't do it tomorrow. You got to do it today. <laughs> I know. I, it's so true. It's so true. And I love what you said about trade shows that you have to pre-sell and post-sell because I think a lot of people don't realize that as well. They I, don't. They think, no, they think they're going to show up. They're going to stand behind the table. They're going to be on their phone the whole time. And miraculously, people are going to want to buy from them. Yeah, because they walk by and they see a shirt. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's impractical. Right. And even yeah. people who are seasoned, who already know they have a lot of clients who come and buy at the show, even they're pre-selling it. They're getting them inspired to come to exactly. the show. Exactly. Right. And they're not inexpensive, so you might as well get the most out of them. If you're going to spend the time and the money to go and set up a, a, a booth, you might as well maximize it. Yeah, and, you know, so many times people come back and they're disappointed in their show and they spend, you know, $10,000 and they blame the show. And you always, <laughs> there's always something that happens after a show. Pete, some people do well and some people don't. Most people don't because most people don't put in the effort to build their business and to do the sales. So they come back and they're all talking, why was the show so bad? I know it's because it rained or there was a tornado, <laughs> or, you know, everybody's in their stores selling, or business is bad at the stores. You know, they all have their excuses, but the truth is, right. you know, you really have to do the work. And there's another thing about trade shows that I should mention. You can't do one and expect that it will tell you uh. you're going to be successful there. It takes several trade shows before you start to build a momentum, like anything else. So if you do one, and that wasn't so good, so you're going to try another. That wasn't so good. You're not building anything. So pick the right trade show, stay with it, and give it three or four shows before you say this is or is not worthwhile. I think that's a great point. 
Uh, that that is great because it's like anything else in business. People have to get used to you. They they have mm-hmm. to develop a level of trust and confidence in you. And if you're one and done, you're you're like a flash in the pan. Well, they're not. They want to know that you're pan. really in business and that you're shipping yeah. and doing your job. And if you don't show up for every single show, then they think, yeah. well maybe they're out of business, maybe they're struggling, they don't have the money to produce. It doesn't look well. On right, you. right, exactly. Okay, will you explain what you mean by product focus? Well, whatever your product is, is should be the best it could be. So let's look at an example of that, dresses. Let's say you want to have a dress line. So you look at your competition and you see what they're doing. You know what you're going to bring to the table. So you really concentrate on each dress, making sure it's as great as it could be. Make sure the fit is perfect. Bad fit could really kill your business. The quality is there. The workmanship is there. And there's levels of that. You know, you have different expectations of a thousand dollar dress than you'd have on a hundred dollar dress. So, you know, I'm not expecting to get Gucci quality on a $50 dress. So, you know, there are levels, but you have to really make sure that each each piece that you make is as good as it could be and put the work in to make it right and really feel like you've achieved a really fabulous line before you start to sell it. Because if your line's not fabulous and people aren't going to love it, you're going to have trouble. It needs to be fabulous these days. It can't yeah, just be I, yeah, moderately right. okay, you know. Oh, right. it's cute, yeah. but they want it to be wow. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And and probably because it is so much more competitive, and with the Internet, people have such a big opportunity to be able to find what they need and want in in so many places. It's true. You know, when um, I was a young person and growing up, we didn't have all the things to buy that we have now. I mean, just when I think there's like not another thing to buy, there's another thing to buy. We didn't go out to, I don't know about you, but my parents never took us out to dinner. We went. No, not unless it was like Arby's or something. Or a special occasion. Yeah, like once right. or twice a year, we'd go to their favorite restaurant. But really, we never went out to dinner. Now yeah. you go out to dinner three, four nights a week. Yeah. You know, vacations. Yes, we went on vacations, but not all the time. It wasn't like you have to go two weeks every year on a vacation and go places. There, The TVs had like limited channels. Now you have. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to tell you, I was the remote. I, I was one of, of four course, kids. Of course, so was I, right. Exactly. Right, and I was a remote. I had to stand by the TV <laughs> and change the channels as my yep. father said, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was the remote. And so the TV, I remember getting a color TV. Oh, my God, it was like this big yeah. thing. Now they have flat screens. They have smart TVs. <laughs> they have all this electronics. You definitely didn't have cell phones. You definitely didn't have computers. No. Now you have things you didn't even think you needed, like Alexa. You know, Alexa, right. what's the weather today? You know, yeah. like, <laughs> like you can't live without that. Now, I don't know how I lived without, like, Waze maps, like, yeah, in the car. Either. And, oh, and the most recent thing I want to buy, which didn't exist before, is these workout mirrors. Oh, I know. I've seen those. Yeah, you like you work out in front of the mirror and they critique you as you're working out. And I'm thinking, oh, it's yeah, only fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, it's, <laughs> really, like, <laughs> it's like really expensive. But it's another thing I never knew I needed until I saw I saw a yeah. commercial. So there's a lot yeah. of things buying for our money. It's not just clothes and you know decor in the house. Oh, and the other thing, how often do people renovate their houses? They fixed their houses up when they moved in and when they moved out that's when they changed you know when they retired they didn't have that decor anymore but they had that decor for 34 years now you redecorate it you know all the time and you're remodeling like nobody could have a dated kitchen oh my god you know oh and and cars we used to see used cars on the road all the time now with the now you can get a new car so easily. Nobody has 
these like bomb cars that we used to have. So things, there's a lot buying for our dollars and you have to stand out in a sea of noise, not just in clothing, but just in spending in general. Exactly, exactly. And it's funny because when you were talking, I was thinking when, when we were growing up, when you needed something, the only way you really got it was if there was a local provider. So right, you, had, you went to the store, you went to the car dealership, you went to the insurance agent. They were all in your neighborhood or in your surrounding geography. You didn't even know about companies that existed other places because That's right. it didn't I never matter, it wasn't that. relevant. Yeah. And Where now, did you grow up? In, uh, mostly in uh, suburban Detroit. Okay. I yeah. grew up in Brooklyn. We tended to have a little bit more available, but um, we had we used to go to Pennsylvania and the Poconos in the summers. Oh. And trust me, there was nothing there. Yeah. You had to travel yeah. 25 miles to go to the mall. Right. Right. You weren't going online. That's and for sure. Going to Amazon and getting whatever it is that you need. So... It is, it is a different environment, and people have a lot of options. So the quality of your product or service, you know, whatever it is you're selling, has to be at the very top of the level that you're selling at in order for you to be competitive. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's why product is so key. You know, I always um, joke products first, second, and third. I mean, without the right product, you don't have a business. I don't yeah. care how much marketing you do. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. So since we were just talking about the Internet some, will you talk about websites and what you think are like the important things people need to keep in mind when they're setting up a website? It's so funny that you're talking about that because I've been writing articles about that recently. So I've been very focused on um, website building. And as a matter of fact, I'm redoing my own website. Um, We just completed the design and now it's being implemented so soon it will be on so I'm very conscious of website design because to me having a good website is like having a business card you can't not have a website sometimes I find people who only have Facebook um, websites and I think that's not enough I mean Facebook isn't enough for your website you almost don't look professional if you don't have one so here are the key things to remember when you're building a website photography is critical do not skimp on photography don't have your girlfriend's cousin be your model (laughs) you know oh she's pretty you know let's use her and she's tall so let's use her you know try to use professional models Use really good photography. Don't use your iPhone. That's not good photography. You need to use proper lighting and proper photography so that you can create pictures that are enticing that people want to buy from. You know, um, I like food photography because that's a really good example of the level of definition you should get. You know, you ever look at food good food photography and you think, oh my God, that peach looks so juicy. I want to pull it off the page and eat it. You know, that's the kind of level of photography you want to create. You also want to have some life, not just catalog shots where you show the front and back, but you also want to have lifestyle shots or hero shots as they're called that give the feeling of the brand what it means, what it stands for. So lifestyle shots are are really valuable and really important. And you have to make sure the stylist is right, hair and makeup. So no matter what your budget is, you have to do a really good job within your budget to create the best pictures. Over the years, I've done a lot of catalog and online business. And I've worked with Neiman, Saks, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's. And we knew if the shot was bad, business will be bad on that style. Yeah. So if you know that at the level of a Neiman Marcus who has years of experience, think of you, you know, starting out or a small business where you don't, you know, you don't have that experience and your likelihood of having bad photography is probably greater. But if they can't do it, always a slam dunk at their budget, think about it at your budget. So you really have, right. to, you really have to do it right. 
So photography is very important. I do believe that you have to be conscious of your bounce rates. So you have to make sure that um, your website is pleasing to look at. It's not confusing. It's not cluttered. That the navigation is easy to follow so that there's a clear path for people. The worst thing is when, you know, you can't find what you're looking for and then you get frustrated and you bounce off. Um, SEO, search engine optimization, is important to drive people to your site, but you also need to do the marketing behind it to create traffic to your site. And you always want to be building on your business. And one last thing, always have a clear call to action yeah. and <laughs> so we call it cta call to action so in my case when people come to my site um, they can get one of my books um, about starting a business and in exchange they give me their email address a lot of companies like a j crew or banana republic they have these pop up pop-up boxes that say, you know, we'll give you 10% off your first order if you give us your email. So you want, even if you don't get a sale out of people coming to your site and they don't convert, you want to at least capture their email so that you can market to them on, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, I, that is critical. Yeah. And, and a lot of people totally miss that part. They're so and, busy, you know, yeah. paying attention to other things. Actually, I just thought of one other thing I want to say. Yeah. You got to make sure that your site works, that there's no broken links. Sometimes having like a, a quote in the wrong place could mess up your, your site. So you have to make sure that it works and that there's no problems with it because it's very easy to have broken links. Yeah, that, that's huge. Thanks for... <clears throat> for adding that. That is a big deal. We should be testing everything to make sure that everything is working. And I love what you said about the navigation, making it easy, because that is one of the most frustrating things on a website when you can't figure out how to get where you want to be. Sure. And I might want to buy something and then be frustrated that I can't buy yeah. it. So you didn't just lose me as a buyer, but you lost me as a future buyer also because I'm not going to come back. Right. And as a reference or a referral source. Right, yeah. exactly. Any yeah. future clients that might come because that person, you know, said great things about me. So it hurts you right. in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, my gosh, this is such great information. I really appreciate you um, sharing it with my listeners. Will you tell them how they can find you? Sure. Um, you could go to my website, which is Vibe Consulting. It's spelled V as in Victor, I, B as in Boy, E, Consulting, dot C-O, not com, but C-O. Or if you want to set up a free consultation, you can reach me at Maria at Vibe Consulting, dot C-O. Terrific. Thank you so much for, for sharing that information. I think it's really valuable and really clear. I, I, I like that, that, that oh, it makes good. sense. It's not um, like a whole bunch of theory. There, there was a lot of really good tactical information that you shared. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And thank you for having me on your show. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed your questions. Awesome. Thank you. And listeners, thank you. You got some great information here, as always. And I would like to thank our sponsor, Audible.com. To get uh, a free trial of Audible.com as well as a free audiobook, go to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Hey guys, this is Gabby Douglas. If you have an active lifestyle like me, hydration is key. That's why I love the Hydration Watermelon Smoothie from Smoothie King. Blended with whole fruits, coconut water, and more electrolytes than some of the leading sports drinks, Hydration Watermelon is the cleaner way to hydrate with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. So you can recover and perform at your peak ability during the summer heat. Order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Me, 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 but also you. 
The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Hip 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Coming up on 5 Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.